Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're doing some kind of spinning confetti kind of thing, uh, something like this. Uh, it's basically a pop sim uh, which has air resistance and a kind of a swirly motion when things get moved uh, in a certain direction, etc. Et it's very basic in some degrees and a bit advanced in others. Uh, it's quite fun. It simulates in real time pretty much. and. Uh, yeah, it can be used for various kind of things. I did this for one project and then reused it for others. And uh, yeah, I just want to show you guys. Uh, it basically is driven by orientation and rotation. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's get to it. So we start up a Domino Geo node, which I already have. I went ahead and did that, sorry. I started recording this and then I realized I had products up that was very NDA'd. So yeah, I had to start stop the recording and redo it. And there I had already created a Geo node. So you have to do this on your own. Uh, and then after you've done that, you can drop down a box. We make the box 10 by 10 and we move it up like eight. And this will be our emitter. There it is. Cool. We want to emit inside it, so we drop down an ISO offset and then we drop down a scatter and we take it down to like one point right now because we're just gonna do this as easy and fast as we can. And after we've done that, we're just gonna give uh, this little dude an um, attribute randomize and we're gonna randomize the orient because the orient is what drives it like I talked about earlier. And that's four dimensions and it goes from minus one to plus one and it's normalized it doesn't matter but we're also going to create a scene uh, marker for orient because that will be needed we will do a few of these uh, yes of course it's it's vital to have that kind of thing so we have an orient here and that's good and we could just do like this and see we have different orients good <laughs> And then we're gonna drop down an attribute triangle. Uh, we're gonna call this spin. And what we're doing here is basically we're creating the spin axis, uh, and that is a vector. So we just do vector spin axis, and that should be equal to randomness of the pt num plus a number plus the dollar f because we're gonna scatter things each frame here. Uh, and then we have to now we get a value from 0 to 1 and we want that to be from minus 1 to plus 1. So we're just going to do a spin axis. We could keep the V here. You don't need it, but it's kind of nice to have that praxis thing going on. Praxis. Funny word. So we just subtract minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, and minus 0 0.5. That's good. And I'm just going to save as well. Hopefully, I can do this in a good way. Sorry, it's gonna do a tutorial. Let's do a new folder free, because this is my, actually I have a second tutorial that I haven't shown yet. Uh, so we call this one, two, two, one. So good. So the spin axis moved and then we can just, sorry, that wasn't meant, we can just normalize it. We add spin axis equals to normalize. At we add spin axis, and that's good. Uh, good, and then we do a spin amplitude, which also is random, and that equals to random at pt num plus dollar f plus do 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 do, and we then just multiply that by a float spin amp so we have a general control over it as well so that's good we have it now and we can build a visualizer for it it's always good to do for this kind of thing because it will be a lot of uh, sorry spin axis that should, no that should be spin your know, spin axis is what we want to show we don't need a spin amplitude that we can just look at so we call it spin axis and the value should be spin axis and not capital A, but small a, and we visualize that as a vector. Good, we have a spin axis, and if we do not look at the orient, we can see we have a spin axis. And if we bring up a lot of more points, 
they have the same spin axis? Why is that? Okay, so forgot something here. It's plus equals two. So good. It just normalized the thing, so that was fucked up. Sorry. And now if we look at spin axis, it's random. That's good. And we can bring down the scatter to one again. Good. Sorry. Uh, always small things you forget. So that's good. We have the spin axis. Yeah, we're going to bring down this as well. So we get spin amplitude set to one at the moment. And then we just do, we're also going to create a point rest. Uh, and we don't just call it rest because we call it point rest because we will have another rest as well for the other geometry. Not sure if you use it, but if you want to do procedural shading, it could be good to have a rest position as well. Uh, after that, we bring down the pop net, which is where the main things happen. And here I'm going to explain a little bit. So sorry, I'm going to do a new one here. Yeah, so basically what we're doing is we have these points and the, they have their axis, which looks like this pretty much. And um, what we then do is we have geometry that looks like this or something that we copy onto them. And the thing is like this axis, the Y axis is always pointing upwards. So it's always the long side here and that we can use a lot. So pretty much what we're going to do is when these are facing upwards, so this is up or this is down, either thing. Uh, then it's going to be pushed uh, on the opposite force of gravity. So gravity is pulling it down. So we're going to push it a little bit up with another force. And we're also going to push it to the side. And that side is determined from the uh, rotation. Uh, so b that's pretty much the idea. So what we do is we compare these, this, this vector, the y vector here, and we compare that to just two. Ver two. We have two versions of doing this, and gets a little different result. And both are cool and good, but different. So the first option is just compare it with a straight uh, vector pointing up or down, uh, and then calculate the dot product from it. So if they're both pointing up, we know that we have something that's perpendicular to the kind of ground plane and gets or to, to the yeah to the straight down vector so we just calculate the dot product from those and that uh, gives us a result from minus one to plus one and then we can use the absolute uh, value of that uh, yeah and it tells us in what direction the, the plane is lying in so that's kind of basic. The other option is to compare it to velocity and that gives us a little bit different result but it's pretty much the same because the velocity is mostly downwards but it's tend to push a little bit to the side as well and in those cases we get like air resistance when it's flying to the side as well like that. Super nice. I'm so good at drawing. Uh, so that's that's uh, the, the, um, the two options we have. But we're gonna start off with just the down vector and uh, yeah b and besides from the push uh, upwards, we will also get another thing and that is the side push. So basically what we're saying is that when it comes like this kind of, we say that here's the thing and it's oh, fucking, I'm drawing with the mouse here and it's spinning like that, uh, like that kind of direction. Uh, we want it to push that way. And the way we're doing that is we take this and then we compare it to, so then we have this up vector here and we compare it to the last frame. And the last frame, maybe the up vector was here. And then we subtract these vectors from one another and we get a new vector that's pointing this direction. And that's good, because that vector then can be used in order to calculate. Uh, if we take that vector and we use this original vector and we do a cross product from them, we get something pointing towards us right now. And then if we take that, and we do another cross product, we get something that points in that direction. So that's good. It tells us in what direction it's spinning and we can use it to push it in that direction. And that's kind of what drives it. You can see it if we look at this, you can see that like, see, it's kind of, I don't know if you see it, but it's kind of, yeah, let's look at this little fucker here. When it comes down, you see that it turns up and it pushes out to the side and that's cause of that effect. And it's like what drive everything. So it's you see, it's pretty much on every one of them, but it gets, yeah, you see it there as well. So that's what gives it its look pretty much, but we'll get to that later. Let's start with the push up thing. 
So, or let's actually start with gravity, because that will be needed. So start with the gravity force. And we're also going to drop down our merge here to, to merge everything we need together. And let's also put down a puff drag. We will do our own drag, pretty much, but we kind of can use a regular drag as well. Let's bring it up to, this, up to like 10, just to be able to watch this. Sorry, we're going to source, we're going to all points. Uh, and uh, yeah. And now we're back at having the spin axis to be fucked. Why is that now? But okay, fuck it. Let's just move on. It we we're not doing one point, so it doesn't matter. And if you're doing that, you have to use position or something as well. Uh, so that's fine. I just lost a little focus here. So yeah. We have a pop drag, and uh, the main thing is the spinning thing. So we kind of remove this because it annoys me. We're just going to put on the orient. And uh, yeah, let's pop down a pop torque because that's what gives us the spin. And we can have it after the drag, it's fine. Uh, so basically, what we're doing here is we're using an expression. And it's very basic. We just say that the axis we can do. The thing is like to do is just do a pass through so you get all the variables here. So axis should be equal to at v at spin axis and amount should be equal to what's it called? Good thing that even if it breaks it's called it's called let me see here what do we call it? We call it spin amp I think. Spin amp yeah. Amount equals to at spin Amp. and we need that there as well so there we go that's good and uh, we're also gonna bring in a noise here to make it a little bit different so we're gonna do a vector which we call noise and that's equal to x noise which is a function that gives us noise from the position so do v at p multiply by channel vector which should be like frequency and then we can just uh, multiply that by channel v. Yeah, we could do float, but fuck it, let's do channel v amplitude or noise amp. We can't use channels that already exist. And then we just do axis plus equals to noise. So we do it additive. Uh, I think that's fine. And we can spring this up. And we give it a little bit of and a little bit of yeah, so that's good. And if we look at the torque here, maybe it, yeah, it does change. You see, we get a little bit difference here. So we could visualize that as well in order to see how much effect this has. But you keep it at something like one and oh sorry, one and. Uh, Point four, I guess maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe we need to bring it up more, but yeah. Let's do it like this. And what we get now are spinning things. And here's the thing: since this is annoying to me, I'm gonna fix this now. Sorry. So spin axis, we can't do. We do fucking instead of random, we just do x noise here as well at p good let's see that the spin thing here is different cool that's what i wanted uh, good and may yeah and also one thing we're gonna do here is global seed for attribute randomize also going to be dollar f so we get that random as well so now if we look at this we should have different those and they are spinning in different ways which is cool they're spinning super fast we will drag this as well and you see they have a random different amplitudes etc which is good so the pop torque is done which is uh, one of the big things here uh, we have a pop drag and we could pop down a pop drag spin as well 
let's just let spin resistance like one. I don't know if that's good. Gives us a little bit. So they're not just continue to accelerate forever, which is good. Great. Uh, now we can move into the a little bit more technical stuff. We're going to do this in pop wops. Uh, I did this in pop v uh, yes vex wrangles before, but it feels it's easy to understand here, and it's not that complex. So I think like doing it this way is easier uh, and uh, not that hard to understand. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in our axis, which is the green axis here. And in order to visualize this, it might be good to do like a couple of points down here. I'm just going to bring that in and we're going to do a little bit of a box. And we can exaggerate the size here, maybe not one by one, because that's too much, but we do like uh, 0.1 there maybe. Yeah, so that's there you go. And as you can see, the green axis is what tells us since we do it. 0.0 in that axis. So that's good. Uh, we have these and they're falling like they should. And they're too big now, so never mind that, but it's easy to visualize like that. So what we're going to bring in is this green axis, as you can see. And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we just bind in the orient. Uh, and we use orient here. Oh, not capital letters. Orient. And we bring in uh, as four, no, not matrix, sorry. Uh, where is it? Four vectors, four floats, vector four. There it is, not four vectors, sorry. And we convert that quaternion to matrix three, which is the free axis in a matrix. And then we do a matrix to vector. Matrix three to vector. And that's good. Here we have our axis. If we plug it into like the normal, and we put that down, and we see that we have a normal that is facing in our green direction as you see as we turn it on off. So that's super good. Th this is all we need for pretty much everything. Um, then we do uh, we do the constant now. We do not compare it to the to the velocity. We're going to compare it to a constant which is just a straight up vector thing. And uh, yeah, we can just take the dot product from these. So we take the second second uh, matrix row and we take that and we get a dot product and we can bind that as export that as dot so we have dot product exported which is good but right now we're going to use the absolute value of the dot instead so let's do that let's take absolute and uh, what we could do here is we could in order to visualize this we could plug it into cd and let's move back and let's look at the copy the points. As you see, when they get turned down, they get the white. They get white. And when they get it straight up, they get black. So that's good. We know that when they're white, we want to apply our forces. And when they're black, we want to remove them. Or no, that's too... So there, is this correct? Yeah, it seems correct, right? Let's just remove the shading. This is hard to tell with the shading on. Yeah. They turn. Yeah, that's good. It's always consistent because I think like the, it's very. F they look white for a long time, and I, that's just how it looks, you know, when you have a linear value of it. Uh, so that's good. It works. So we know now that when they have a value of the absolute value here is one, we should give them air resistance. So uh, the air resistance thing should come from the velocity. Uh, and that's important actually. So what we do is we just uh, pretty much can take the length of the velocity and we can then just multiply it with a constant. I don't know what value, let's put down high value just to show things here, I don't know. And uh, then we can do a vector set component. And we're going to do this as a second component, and we're going to use this. So that gives us a y value. And then we could pretty much just add this to our force. Which brings in there. And 
Let's plug that into the force. Good. Now we should have something that gives us. Maybe we should exaggerate it more actually. Because it's kind of hard to tell right now. So let's just, in order to, uh, one thing, let's just lock it here, remove so we don't show normals. And we just see here, we just see that everything is right. We have the velocity, we have a multiple constant. Let's bring it up to 2000. And just see, yeah. So, okay, that's bring it down to 200. We want something that's visual, but uh, okay, it's just okay. One thing we forgot here is we forgot to multiply this. Sorry, so here's a problem. <laughs> uh, before we add it to the force, we should, of course, multiply it with the dot product. That's like the whole thing here, and I just forgot about it. So, we do that, and now we shall see that, yeah, the falling and they're getting up and yeah compared to so it's super strong if we just take it down to 20 again i think we should be able to see it but it yeah it is there but it's kind of hard to tell but if we bring it up to 50 maybe we have something that's not look extremely exaggerated but still yeah you can see that they yeah now you see it clearly they're so big, so you need to accelerate here, but I think 20 is something that we want to aim at, rather, in the end. Good. And what I also want to do here is I just want to bring in uh, noise. Uh, so let's do that. Let's just take the position and bring in an AA noise. And do a fit range of that from minus 0.5 to 0.5, because we and we maybe do like 0.3 to 1, sorry. And then we just multiply it instead. I thought to do it additive, but we do it multiplicative. So we get some, depending on where they are, they kind of get uh, less and more, just so it's a little bit random. It's hard to tell now. It will be clear when you see it in, I mean, just laying things, adding a little bit of complexity. It's hard to tell when you see it like this, but it will be obvious later on. So cool, we could also, in order to visualize this a little bit, we can put in the absolute thing to the CDS end. So we see like uh, the white ones get a little upwards movement and then they get a little faster movement. And this will be, of course, be clearer if we bring this down a little bit, I guess. So let's just bring this down. We can bring this down to like point, we get really small and bring this down to like point 0.3 and point 0.3 is maybe, maybe we keep it like point 0.5 there so they get a little bit of length. You can see that they have a movement that is, yeah, you see like that one that's just not getting the straight white gets a faster movement. So that's cool. It's not that obvious right now, but it's, um, especially since we have the other drag force as well, they get dragged a lot either way. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the push upward thing. So let's move to the push side thing. We should call this push up and why do you give me an error and why are you capital letters you shouldn't be capital letters push up and yeah so do it on another pop-up and let's call this push sides we could do this in one as well but i think it's a little bit easier when we do it like this so the push side things um here it gets a little little bit more complex it's not super complex but like I talked before here, is what we're going to look at now is the spin. So we have our points and we have our up axis. And we look at this for the previous frame. And then we look at this for this frame. We calculate this vector here, which is just like the, the yeah, you just subtract them from each other pretty much. And then from that vector, we look then we have that vector and then we have this vector which is our original upwards vector thing or it's actually not like that it's rather like this it's kind of hard to do in 2d it's kind of hard to draw for me and from those two we can as you see now we have actually we point to draw this from like zero angle so from the if we just put them at zero a Cartesian scale it's like a vector pointing that way 
and then we have vector oh, well, more, more or less pointing like that and from those we can take the cross product which basically just gives us I don't know if you know the cross product but it's basically get, gives us a plane so when we take the cross product we can see these things here as a plane so we see this as a plane and then this pretty much gives us the normal from the plane so to speak so it gives us something pointing straight at us and then we reuse that and do another cross product with this thing and that gets us to uh, gets us pointing forward direction I will show you now instead so we can go back here and we can take this and we can just copy this thing because we need to do that and sorry before that we're gonna do something pre-solve here and that is just to store down the uh, store down the orient from the previous frame so we call p at old orient equals to p at orient and p is for uh, vector 4 uh, 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 quaternion so old orient we call that good and now we can bring in this thing so we bind in the orient and we also bind in call this old orient that's good now we have both of them then we can do I want the old because it's older on top right O1 on top maybe not we just subtract here not subnet or so do a subtract so what you do then is that we take the second one from this one and we take the second one from this one and we get a subtracted uh, we get the distance between them so to speak we normalize that and we take this one and we do the cross product and we do the cross product from that one and it's already normalized so you don't really need to care about that and then we basically take another cross product and it doesn't really matter which one we do this from but I think we should do this from that one and we take this cross product and here we have the the pointy thingy we could bind this to just show it we call this uh, side push or something like that and that should be a vector and uh, let's just visualize it side push and we call it side push and we visualize this as a vector we close it and we play and yeah it's uh, let's just remove the axis so here's the side push it's kind of hard to tell but it's rotating which is good because the thing is rotating and this will of course then be uh, uh, let's see if we can do it like this yeah you can see it's pushing in yeah it's following the rotation and it's uh, it's not very obvious when you see this thing but the thing is like it's it's negative right now it's we should have it on the other way so what the thing we're gonna do is just you could probably just switch around these cross product things I guess if you do other way it will be correct maybe if you do it like this and this instead no sorry that instead is that the other way around let's just see I'm not sure Fuck it, we go back to the way it was and we just negate it because I know that that will be correct because that's what I did last time. So let's do it like this. And uh, let's just negate it. Good. And uh, yeah, we need a multiply constant here as well. Uh, let's do, I don't know, clear this up a little bit. And this multiply constant will then this gets a little bit messy but let's try to keep it tidy can we no fuck me that wasn't a good idea because that gives us that uh, yeah so what we want here as well is the dot product so we're gonna bind in that because we just want this to you know be a 
applied when the dot product is correct. So we bind in the dot product. Uh, the thing is here as the dot product. Let's see that we did store the dot product, right? Yes, we did store the dot product. Good. Uh, sorry, we're in the wrong place now. Yes, and what we want to do here is we want to do two fits. We want to fit this from minus one to one, and then we're going to fit it back from zero from minus one to one. And the reason we're doing this is because we can do a ramp in between if we want to art direct this. So we do a ramp parameter. We don't. I don't think we're going to do that much with it right now, but it's called dot ramp. Because uh, it's good to have if we want to, if we want to, you know, change where where it's applied or not. Uh, so we can take this multiply constant and we can multiply this in turns with our dot product or our fixed dot product. And then we can pretty much add that to the um, to the force that is. So we take the force. Or actually, what we're going to do here as well, we're going to multiply this for one thing else, and that is the speed. So we take the velocity, we take the length of that, and we're just going to plug that in. So we have a speed as a constant here as well. Uh, and yeah. Then, uh, yeah, then we can add it to the force. And then we just uh, plug it into force. Uh, cool. Let's see how that looks. It probably looks like crap right now. It doesn't seem to do that much right now. So let's look. Did we? What did we put the multiply constant on though? Put it on one. Let's bring it up to like twenty. See what happens. Let's exaggerate things. We're gonna lock here so we can see. Uh, see what's happening. Yeah, we get things here. Maybe it's a bit exaggerated, but let's bring it down to like ten or something. And. Uh, It's super big right now, so it's hard to tell. But yeah, let's uh, do some things here with the, the box thingy. So I think this should be like super small compared to what it is, like 0 0.3. Oh, actually, we're going to change this. We're going to do a grid instead because we're going to displace this, so it's better to do a grid. So let's do a grid. And let's just do 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. And uh, good. Let's see what's happening. Now we see it's a little bit better. It's a bit, yeah, it's a lot of pushing thing going on here, but. It's kind of, it kind of works. Yeah, get this little turly twiny things. So what we could do now is we could add in like a regular uh, pop force as well. Uh, just to give it a little bit more randomness. So let's do that. Let's bring in something like uh, amplitude 0.5 maybe. Swirl size one maybe to start off with. Gives us a little bit more randomness. And also, I think like yeah, it's quite quite decent. Uh, we could of course also scatter a little bit more points, bring that up to twenty to see what's going on. Oh, here's the thing: we don't need a grid scale to be like that. We could probably do it down to like two by two. No, I actually want four by four here, so we can do a little bit of things with it because we need to do the displacement as well. Yeah, so there's like a general problem here that is 
I think they're not slowing down enough, maybe. So we could bring up, we could do two things. We could do the po regular pop drag, uh, which is there. We can bring it up to 20, maybe. So we got the general drag. That's a little bit better, more obvious. And also, let's see here. I think the spin is too little here. So let's bring up the pop torque. Uh, I'm gonna do multiply by spin amplitude instead here and uh, see if we can get up it to maybe. Maybe two, I don't know if that's better. Yeah, that is better. Yeah, now we have a little bit more spin to most of them. Yeah, I think you're gonna do the push upwards. Uh, gonna increase that a little bit. Uh, let's see what we should bring that up to. Maybe bring it up to 30, 30 instead. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it depends on what look you want, of course. But that's pretty good. And yeah, I'm gonna the push side things. I'm gonna bring up as well a little bit. Gonna multiply that. It's I don't see any problem with exaggerating it. We could also look at the dot ramp here and maybe do like something like this. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's see what's going on. Yeah, we have the general motion is there, which is important. And yeah, it's starting to look good, I think. Yeah, we get the nice kind of s people that, uh, like dudes that get stuck in there. Uh, good. So yeah, I think we're kind of happy with this at the moment. Uh, let's move on to the grid. Because the thing we did is, uh, well, on here is to have it deformed as well in the air. And that's pretty simple, actually. Uh, so what we do is just uh, put on a group here and uh, let's just move into this thing. So what we want here is very basic thing to, we just want to take some points here and we want to take the outer points here, these, I want to take these points and then we group them and then we do an attribute triangle where we just form them but first we're gonna do give them the rest position as well uh, so let's just do V at prim rest equals to at P that's very basic you just have the position of them the original position which is good uh, and uh, yeah and then we have this thing here so now we can move on to, sorry, so big. I don't want to see the points, please. Can I not see the points? Good, thank you. We could also remove, sorry, we're just going to remove the CD visualization here. I shouldn't have it. Uh, let's remove this. Good. So there we go. And we can just re sim it and look at it. Yes, yeah, so it looks good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the the displace thing. Uh, we could also actually, I also want to do another thing. I want to give them ID and that's also pretty simple. We can just do, because we have an ID from the points, but we want, if we want ID for every point here, uh, if we want to do something random with them, I don't know if we want that, but we let's do it and we do a second ID as well. So we do I at ID two and that's equal to uh, our ID, which is for the points then. We can subtract by once, we start at zero. And then we can basically just do it uh, by 16, because we have 16 points, and we do plus I at prim ID. Uh, 
Did we give them a prime idea here? No, we didn't. Sorry, we're gonna, of course, also give them a prime idea up here. I forgot that. So let's do that. I at prim id equals to at ptnum. I don't know why I want that id for everyone, but we do some things here to just prepare it for render. Uh, so if we look now, we have, if we look at id2 here, we have an unique id for every one, but it maybe we should not subtract one from the id then. So it should start at zero. Yeah. So here we have an id for every point as well. It could be good to have. And they, they calculated from the, yeah. Uh, if we just do ptnum, it will change when we have changing point numbers, so it's better to do like this. And we can also do like an, uh, we could also put an UV project up here, so we have that if we want to do UVs for it. Yes, so, oh, fuck me, sorry. I know I'm doing this in a kind of annoying way right now, but we could just, I just realize things that we want. We can just look at the quick shade here just to see that we have UVs on it. So that's good. Good, good, good. So yeah, let's move on to the, I don't get why it gives me these things all the time. So let's move on to displacement. We can call this give ID. And we did another output wrangle and we call this displace. So basically what we do is we're gonna, when it's moving towards our axis, uh, the up axis that we used, we want them to be displaced uh, based on their uh, speed. So it's not that hard, but we need some floats. We need to do a float, which you call displace or disp. Uh, we also want the absolute dot product, so we can do that. apps dot equals to absolute dot. Uh, we also want uh, the up. Just yeah, we need to. Sorry, we're just gonna do. We're also gonna bind one thing here. Sorry, I can move back a little bit. I just realized things. We're just gonna bind this as a vector instead, so we have it. So we don't need to do the thing. We're just gonna call it up direction. Direction. So we have that binded as free floats. Sorry, just realized things while we move on. So yeah, so we're gonna do a vector up, let's do it like this instead. We could just use it, but I want to be sure it's normalized. It should be normalized, but you can never be too sure. So we just do V at up direction. That's good. And we also want the down direction actually. So we do V vector down equals to zero minus zero minus up, which is good to have. Down, not down, down. Yeah, and then we want the normalized velocity. So we do that as well. We do a vector normalized velocity, which equals to normalized velocity v at v and then we want the up distance which is the distance between the up vector and the normalized uh, the normalized velocity so let's do that let's just do a float up dist and we're gonna check what's further so we know if it's pointing upwards or downwards. So we do distance uh, up and nv and then we can just copy this and we do down distance and this way we know if it's further down or up if it's and that's pretty handy to have. And then we just do something if uh, in a parenthesis up dist is greater than down dist then we do something that is displays and then we want the down distance because whatever shortest is the way it's facing so then we do down displays is equal to down dist 
and uh, else it should be displays equals to then we need mi minus for the up distance because it's negative uh, good there we have a little bit of code and then we want to displace direction what way are we displacing them so we do vector uh, displace direction and that is equal to our up direction which we stored later before uh, and we can just do that by multiply that by the displace which we calculated and it could be negative or positive depending on what direction we are and we can just multiply that by absolute apps dot or did we do that in uh, we did something like that I guess apps dot good so now we have the thing here and we also want to calculate the speed actually so we do float speed equals to length because we want the speed to be a uh, variable here that gives us the amount and then we can just add position equals plus equals to display direction multiplied by a uh, channel float which we call amount and we can multiply that by speed and then we want this to just run over our group and if we now do like this and we bring this in you see we get we get them displaced in the direction we want and this we probably want super low maybe like I don't know 0 0.2 maybe and let's look at this so you see now they bend nicely when they turn and it's based on the speed and the direction and everything so yeah that's yeah that's pretty much it we could also of course we can make to take things a little bit further here we could also uh, give them the wheel rest position here so we put on another angle which we call rest and this is, I mean, this won't be shown here. This is more when you render. So we call this rest 2 maybe. And then we we'll just be v at p and t rest plus d at prim rest. I think they call like that, right? I'm just going to see here that we have dot rest. Point rest, prim rest. Prim rest. Okay, we have two. Okay, sorry. So it's prim rest like that. Should of course, and then the rest two is correct. Yeah, that's good. And we see it's different from each. No, it's not prim rest. It is not V at prim rest, V at point rest. Yeah, it's different, sorry. I just missed the fact that we changed in, didn't change in all directions, but it changed, yeah. So that's good. It's different for everyone. Cool. And what we could do now as well, I don't want to see it like that. Uh, the good thing here is we can actually, if we want it, it doesn't really matter because it won't do that much, but we could also trail this now and uh, compute velocity so we get the small little movements uh, from, so we have a little bit difference when it's, it won't show if it doesn't come super close, but it could be cool to have. And uh, yeah, then we can subdivide it and that will work as well. Uh, we will get a little bit nicer as you can see we can do a depth of two here no we don't need a depth of two that's extremely accelerated we do one we could probably just do point normals and that would probably give us the pretty much the same result and if you want you can extrude it uh, as well of course you can put down normals here and then yeah it's super fast uh, and if you want it faster you could also do out of frostrum thing but which I did for mine, but that's really not the point here. So yeah, let's just play blast this and see what we get. 
okay we're looking at it from you know where it starts which is maybe not what we should let's just abort this sorry let's look at a bit further down and we ex do this to 500 instead so let's see what happens here oh we should not look it as subdivided we should just do like this boink and there we have it all we don't need to look at it subdivided but yeah it's definitely working and as intended and we get this kind of neat swirly kind of motion to it kind of basic uh, something it's a little bit more complex but if you just break it down for yourself <coughs> and I think you will understand it if you don't if probably you do it's just me that feels some things are complex because I'm stupid but yeah so that's it uh, yeah thank you bye